Okay, normally when we talk about pronunciation, we do very serious things in this class, right? Like we did the tricky T, right? Places where an ED sounds like a T. Um, if you watched it, right? We did that last time. This time we're going to be doing something that's a little bit more silly, but still kind of important. So I'm going to tell you a story about why this is so important to me. Way back um, when I went to Russia after studying it uh, to serve a mission for my church, the person that they had me working with, my partner, was Russian. And I thought, great, I speak good Russian. I got good scores in Russian. I'm going to do a really good job at this. But I couldn't understand her. I could understand many of the people that I worked with. I could understand everybody else. But I had a hard time with her. And I couldn't figure out what you know, Elf Marina was saying a lot of the time. But over time, I began to realize that she was a very cute girl. You know, the kind of girl who likes to, you know, they like to walk arm in arm with you. And she had a lot of colored pens. And she loved stickers and kittens and stuff like that. When she was speaking Russian to me, she was using baby speak. Baby speak is how you talk to a little baby. And in many cultures, it's very similar. You get really high. You ask a lot of questions. What's your name? What's your name? Right? Like, it's got a lot of ups and downs. And that alone can be difficult to understand. So do you remember when we talked about paralinguistics? With baby speak, you have a lot of unique paralinguistics. Right? But there are also some parts of baby speech that are a little bit different on the language level. So, for example, one of the common things in English is to add this E sound. You guys remember this one when we did uh, the different phonic sounds? E, right? So, it's not a dog, it's doggy. It's not a duck, it's a ducky. Mom? Yes, absolutely. Mommy! Right? So that's the first part, is to use this E a lot. Um, and that E will come up um, on all sorts of words in baby speak. Another convention that you'll hear with baby speak in English is to change a word to the sound that it makes. So instead of, um, let's do it here, train, you might have choo-choo, right? A cow might be called a moo. So that's another one of the vocabulary elements of this baby speak. Sometimes words are repeated twice, and I'm sorry to get into this because it's a little bit gross, but you know how it is with babies. So instead of P, 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 right? Um, a daddy might be a dada. Goodbye becomes bye bye. So these are sort of more vocab based. But you'll notice there's a lot of changes with pronunciation. And a lot of these changes in pronunciation kind of imitate the way that small children speak. So one of the biggest ones is the use of what in places. And this will connect with some of these other ones, these competing one, uh, repeating ones, or these sound using ones. So you might have. I love you. What, are, what word is this supposed to be? Love, right? I love you. I love you. Um, the wa can stand in a lot with like L's or R's. So instead of this, with this, 
you have a wa. So is it going to wane today? This can come in also in the middle of words or um, as blended words. Is it scary to you? Is the twak broken? So um, this, this is a really common one. Um, and again, it imitates a little bit how a child speaks. This can also um, happen in duplications. This is a really common baby speak thing to do. So you might say, I have a teeny weeny problem. So this one is not even an R or an L. It's just adding that wa. So that repetition with a wa. Um, the homework won't work, right, or something like that, like just repeating it over again. Not that babies have homework, that's not usually a thing they have to deal with. Uh, you have a smushy, whooshy cheeks. Say smush, so that we have two, right? Smush plus E, and then that replacing with wa, and then E, smushy and whooshy, right? So you have both of those there. Okay. The next one uh, that happens a lot is replacing a v as a b. Let me just make sure I have this right. So you might have v into v. And then do you remember these th ones? These soft th and hard th. Uh, this might become an f or an s. And this one might become a T or a D. So you might have did, day, tank, you. Right? So here you have the replacing uh, the th sound with a da or a T. Again, this is kind of imitating the way that small children speak. So why is it useful to learn all of this, right? What are the situations in which this is going to be useful for you? Yeah, I mean, like, if you're talking to a baby, yeah. So you may want to use this. This is very advanced English to go up to a little baby and say, don't you have the cutesiest, wootsiest little toesies, right? So you can use some of this um, when speaking to babies. It's also, remember my experience in Russia? Yeah, to understand it, to understand what people are saying. In addition to using this type of pronunciation um, with small babies, people will use it with dogs. So you'll hear people saying to dogs, oh, my cute little baby, right, to dogs. Um, also, You'll see this in kind of insulting or patronizing situations. So teenagers might say to another teenager, are you scared, baby, right? Like they're trying to make fun of them by talking to them as if they were babies. So that's another situation. A lot of times people will do this to be cute and affectionate, um, sometimes romantic. I think usually more, hmm, stereotypically more women than men. So you might say to your boyfriend or girlfriend, do you love me, right? Like to try to be cute to them. Um, you know, my companion, she was using it to be cute and friendly. You know, pass me the whittle knife. She would say things like that. Um, so it's useful to know and understand. I'm, there's not a lot of situations where you have to use this pronunciation but it's really good if you can at least understand it so that when the situation comes up, you know what people are saying generally. So with this very weird pronunciation, um, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna watch a short video and I want you to write down any words that you noticed where they're using the baby talk um, and extra points if you can figure out, not really points, you don't get points for this, but extra points in your mind. If you can figure out what rules they're using. Okay, so are they using E? Are they using repetition? Are they using the wa? Are they using the da instead of a v or a th? So look for those and just take notes and we'll talk about it after the video.